Welcome to the Six Packs on Mars podcast. My name's Smitty. We keep the conversation going. We keep talking six topics, six beers uh, on the podcast today. I'm looking at him. He's looking handsome. Uh, Jason Sled Dog Sledder from the rock and roll band Crony. Just all around badass. How are you? Good, buddy. How are you, bud? Good. Uh, Jake Draper. Jake, where are you? Uh, real, we'll give it a good plug later, but uh, real quick, is it Titan Fitness? And I'm saying it wrong, I'm sure. Probably gonna change the name. It's Mad Titan training right now, but yeah. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about a name change. I got one in mind. So. Okay. But yeah, that's what I do right now. All right. Returning to Six Packs on Mars, uh, Josh Paul. Is it AK Productions, uh, Josh? Am I that's saying that right? Yeah. It's a video and website media production company. All right. Also, uh, comedian with Kamikaze Comedy. Is yeah. My, yeah. Uh, Jeremy West from. Uh, uh, the Droogs, the knockoffs, the uh, Kamikaze Comedy, uh, USS Comedy Night, all that stuff. How are you? Hey, yeah, I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. It's been a while since we got to do a podcast. I'm happy you guys are here. Uh, six topics, six beers. Uh, let's just get into it. Number one, are there any pandemic practices that you'll keep even after everybody is uh, that is going to get vaccinated does like shaking hands, hugs. Are you going to keep religiously sanitizing and washing, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah, for sure. I think um, I've definitely gotten more aware with where my hands are and like keeping inventory of where they've been to and. <laughs> But, you know, just to make sure I wash them, don't touch my face. You know, it's it's pretty easy stuff you don't think about, you know, like picking your nose or itching your face. But, I, I don't know, I've become really hyper aware of that kind of stuff. So I think going forward, uh, shoot, that's not a bad habit to stay in. No, and I guess that actually we could probably uh, meld <laughs> Uh, the second topic as well, which is there anything about the pandemic you'll miss? Like, uh, I think it was called pandemic romanticism. So we could actually probably throw uh, both of these together. Uh, uh, Jake, I don't know, man, you're running a gym. So, I mean, you're, 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 I'm sure you're taking uh, 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 sanitary precautions most of the time. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, nothing about that's probably going to change. But I think on a personal level, the, uh, the six foot distance between other people, and we can just keep that forever. That doesn't bother me at all. I mean, when you're at the grocery store, even out of a pandemic, and somebody is too close to you, you're like, you need to get away from me because you're too close. So now that you know, now now it's almost like an excuse to distance ourselves. You know, if I'm reaching up to uh, to a shelf and somebody else is right in my face, I'm like, listen, there's a pandemic. Get out of here. But I, when it's done, I kind of hope we just keep that rule in play. Let's just everybody doesn't need to be on top of each other all the time. I just right. like the fact that there's a gentle reminder that like the personal space that, you know, some people don't have a sense of personal space and it's nice got, to have that little boundary. We've got our bubble now and I don't want to let it go. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Drastically affect cuddle puddles. <laughs> Josh, what were you going to say? No, I'm on. I, I understand what Jason's telling Cause I, I, before this, I thought I was a germ freak and it turns out I was not fully a germ freak until until the pandemic truly hit because then now i i uh, you know during the winter time you always got long sleeves on i open every single door handle with my sleeve instead of my hand or if i can i'll open it with my arm before i eat i wash my hands every time before i eat and when the pandemic was really like you know hard like like last march and last april when we all thought you know we were all gonna die like I was, I was washing off my phone, my phone screen. I was washing off everything that I touched when I came back from the grocery store. Um, I wouldn't touch uh, packages when they drop shit off. Like my girlfriend would go to pick up a package after somebody would drop it off and I'd yell at her. I'd be like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm going to go grab the package. And I'd, I'd be like, we're not opening that door for three days. <laughs> But now, yeah, now it's uh, it's I'm coming, I'm going back into my old ways, you know. But not like so much as like the conspiracy, like you know, like you can't touch a single thing. But I do wash my hands probably twice as much as I used to, you know, as opposed to washing my hands after every time I go to the bathroom. I would wash my hands purposely just before I eat and when I get home, and my screen. 
because a lot of people don't realize this is the dirtiest thing you carry around with you every day because it's got your fingerprints from when you bought it till now <laughs> if you don't wash yeah. your screen off you know and, and you're, you're you're shitting with these things man jeremy That's, yeah uh, what was the question? Oh, I don't, uh, uh, pandemic romanticism, <laughs> keep sh washing your hands, sanitizing, etc. Yeah, I, honestly, just to keep the same energy you were before the pandemic, like just wash your hands and shit. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm vaccinated now, so I have a strong sense of uh, superiority. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Somebody so. had said something to me the other day about, uh, uh, you know, this stuff happening like every five years. And I think, you know, I think you know, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of news reports and it, you know, especially, uh, you know, there, there will be a rise in coronaviruses. There will be a rise. It, it, this will happen at least fairly regularly every four to five years. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but I mean, it's probably a good idea to get in the practice anyway, just, just for the next time. If there is a next time, it does seem like it's in the best interests of the, uh, online companies for us to have a pandemic every five years or so. Does it not? Yeah. Cause look at what we're doing now. You know, we have to have this, uh, instead of in a studio, we have to talk to each other at a computer. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not, I'm not super conspiratorial minded, but I'm a little bit there. And uh, it does seem just a little bit suspicious that the companies that stand to benefit most from the pandemic are the ones that are doing all the online business. I don't know. It's something to look into, I feel like. Yeah, let me Google it right now. We'll find out. We'll get to the <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it was crazy, though. I I don't I don't know if there's much to romanticize for the COVID for me other than it slowed everything I was doing down almost to a stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like chromium, we still have to release that. It would have been released already. I mean, uh, a lot of bummer shit. And when I started working from home too, and I can't go anywhere, there was depression. You know? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And just so this year, I, I had to change my whole routine up, man. Just uh, clean up the basement, got the gym rolling. My drummer Hayes is coming over uh, three times a morning, so we're, we're getting a little 40-minute weightlifting session in there, and that's that's helping everything this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, not for me. There's not much to romanticize. I just can't wait till uh, you know it it planes out and it balances, and we can get get back going. I feel like almost everybody has gotten to the point and has, I don't know, man, I feel like almost everybody has gone through some kind of, you know, there are different levels of severity, I'm sure, but some kind of fucking breakdown uh, <laughs> during this whole shit. Yeah. I think at the very least, you've been forced to take stock of what you have. If that makes any sense. I don't know. I've been high for fucking... Too much straight <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for we're, I assume it's kind of the same for a lot of people, especially people that were unemployed. Because I was unemployed for four months when everything locked down, and there was a stage of, uh, you know, like, so we can just stay at home and do nothing. And you know, I was I was on unemployment, so I wasn't really worried about money all that much. So I'm very good at entertaining myself. So I, you know, I can I can enter, I can sit at home every single day and have a great day, not talking to anybody. But there was that, you know, nearing the end, there was that that stir craziness that that I that I, I needed to talk to people, and I found myself, you know, kind of uh, like I would get on a Zoom meeting like just any kind of situation talking to somebody online and the meeting would end because what you wanted to talk about would be over. And I would, I would be like, wait, wait, don't leave. Don't, don't leave, leave me. I just, can we just talk about my dog? Can we just talk about the weather? Can we talk about anything? Please just talk to me, please. And uh, yeah. So yeah, it was a point where I was like, I need, I need some interaction here. And uh, now, now that things are getting normal, I'm getting that interaction back and I'm realizing that, uh, I still don't like people. So, <laughs> but 
you like them more than you did before, right? <laughs> I yeah. appreciate it just a little bit more, yeah. Is there anybody else uh, that uh, that uh, was feeling a huge need for uh, human contact? I definitely wasn't. <laughs> oh, man, I, honestly, that's great. I, I appreciate the hell out of that. Yeah, no, I, I really didn't feel. I, I, feel, I, I feel pretty much the same. I'm not going to lie. I still do pretty much everything I did before because I didn't really – I don't have to communicate with that many people more than one-on-one. -on -one. So I wasn't in a lot of big groups. Uh, I had to cancel two birthday parties. That was kind of heartbreaking. And then uh, other than that, yeah, I spent a lot more time outside though. Last year was probably like the most I've been outside, but I mean, I still, I still did most of the stuff the same, but I did a lot more outdoor activities. I did a lot more outdoor running and a lot less, uh, a lot less in the gym working out. So I got I got more cardio in than normal. I'm probably one of the only people that lost weight during all this. And that was no something shit. completely different. No shit. Well, let's move on because that's a great uh, opportunity uh, to talk about the next thing, which is uh, I did I I didn't go vegan. You call it vegetarian, like you know, the vegan and vegetarian is different. But for the month of April, uh, I'm basically vegetarian. No alcohol, and uh, I know Jake wanted to talk about this specifically, and it's interesting to me. But what are usually your first thoughts when somebody tells you that they're going vegan? Are you like, ah, this fucking guy, or do you take it seriously, or is it? A, you're like, oh man, that's fantastic. Uh, from a health and fitness 100% standpoint, one hundred percent skeptical hippo. Like, yeah, no. yeah, I get it. <laughs> when somebody goes vegan over vegetarian it's usually like a moral thing that's why yeah. i asked about it i was like well what's your reasoning for that when they go vegetarian it's usually like oh I, did you watch the documentary on netflix netflix is that what there's a, no. there's a documentary called uh, game changer and i had some friends that watched it and they all were like i'm going vegetarian because i watched this thing and it it was just full of oh this study said this this study said this and it was a whole lot of causation and correlation not being the same thing so i was like i'm curious what his reasoning is for wanting to do this vegetarian thing yeah. it was a thing a weight loss thing or what and i was like i know a lot about this stuff so i'm curious i'm a, but i didn't want to i didn't want to probe you I no i no look it's it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great thing to get into uh for me personally i'm just trying to kick start my health i'm fucking terrible at like <laughs> Uh, a, I'm terrible at motivating myself. I don't have great self-discipline. Uh, I eat like shit. Uh, you know, I drink way too much fucking beer. Uh, but now I, I'm actually getting motivated. I'm getting down the path, but I'm just trying to kickstart, do this cleanse thing, just veggies and water. And it's all I'm doing for the month of April before I move to a more balanced diet, which will include meat, fish, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I well, applaud you in your efforts. Whew. It sucks. The, the the health benefits of it. That's why that was actually where I, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go touch up on that. But yeah, like the health benefits of going vegetarian mostly are related to the weight loss that you'll have because vegetables are super low in in calories but super high in fiber, so you always feel full on them. So you will lose probably a lot of weight, especially if you cut out beer because that's just empty calories. But I was like, I was like, you know, you can put the meat back in and you're gonna have just as good a diet. But you know, for you. It's, I'm going to do this because it's going to help me get started. And then I'll go back and I'll throw that in there. But I mean, really, as long as you stay below your baseline in calories, you're, you're going to be fine. Like health wise, you'll be good too. Yeah. But I suggest you should throw in some cardio. It's good for you. No, it's going to happen. I just had, you know, I, I finally got my, uh, my boxing equipment, workout equipment. And I boxed back in the day when I say boxed, it was a fucking hobby. Like it was intramural boxing. I didn't like boxing, boxing matches necessarily, you know, but I'm finally getting back into that. So I need something fun and something uh, that I want to do. Cause I'm, Hey, I'm not going to fucking run on a treadmill just cause I hate it. You know? Yeah. No, here's a question. Do you think veganism is a fad? Or do you think it's something that's going to stay? Uh, it's something, I don't know. I think it's probably something that's going to stay. Uh, veganism is kind of, it's not necessarily always just like I was saying, it's not always like a health thing. It's don't look into like, like, like Walmart or, uh, like any of the big companies, like how they treat animals, because you probably will want to go vegan after you see the stuff that they do to like chickens and cows and stuff like that. Oh no, so it's terrible. I think That's it's probably sticking around for the sake of animal rights. So like even with me, I try to avoid the big chains when I buy when I buy beef or chicken. You know, it is it's pretty inhumane the way that they treat them. 
Um, so I, I think veganism is probably here to stay for as long as um, uh, inhumane practices are. And since those are probably not going anywhere because, you know, profit, that's, that's just the way it's going to be. I mean, so I do think it's probably here to stay. Uh, a lot of, lot of stuff like this does come and go. And it's, you know, you got like a five-year cycle of a lot, most of these things, and then they're, then they're gone. But I think veganism is probably going to stick around. Yeah, I think that's one, that's one positive thing from veganism for people that do eat meat is that as, if, if enough people go veganism or vegetarian, then the demand for meat will go down. So it'll drive producers to have better, you know, processes like, uh, like for one thing that, that, that I don't like is uh, like, especially in pork, like gestation crates where they keep, they'll keep a pig literally in a crate that it only fits just that pig. And it's, you know, it's a lot of it's really super humane. And if you wanted to go buy like a, you know, like a cage free bacon, you know, there's no such thing. It just doesn't exist. Like you gotta buy the bad, treated pork and yeah you buy, yeah, buy, buy from like a local farmer and you're going to get something real but you're going to pay a lot more for it exactly. so you know it's like do i want to be broke or do i want to be you know do i want to take care of the world and usually people say well i'm gonna i'm gonna not be broke so Here, here's another angle too you want to talk about vegan you want to talk about like meat substitutes i mean this is a fun conversation to have maybe it's like uh i think it was kfc and, I, and i'm going strictly from memory KFC, uh, they signed on somehow, some way for some f uh, meatless chicken. And it's, I don't know, it's like a fucking 3D printer and they just have the nutrients oh. and brrr, it's like Soylent Green. Uh, but I'm down, I'll try anything. I tried it. It actually does taste the same. But <laughs> if you need your vegetables to taste like meat, it means you want to eat meat. Just <laughs> eat fucking meat. I just, I, don't, I never understood like, Here's our meat-free chicken. I'm like, then it's not chicken. Well, <laughs> here's my no. My argument is that uh, it I, honestly it'll probably lead to some other uh, form of not a movement necessarily, but a vegan movement where uh, uh, what's the reason now? You said for uh, 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 animal cruelty reasons and such. Uh, I could see that being a huge thing as far as these meatless. Substitutes, I, that could be a huge uh, uh, thing in the future. Yeah, I mean, if I think, I think, I think, yeah, if, if there was more of a, an emphasis on ending some of the practices with the way that we process meat, it would probably lead to a decline in how many people would identify as being vegans. But I mean, you're you're not wrong. But I mean, as far as like the health benefits of doing something that's the, the what are they the impossible whopper or yeah. whatever they, they call it, the impossible whatever. Uh, I, I mean, there's not really any, any real health benefits and they're pretty much the same, but it's like you can go to Burger King and you get the meatless Whopper, but then you look in the window and they have all these little frozen pieces of cow in there. And it's like, well, all of them still died and probably in a terrible way. So it's like, you know, you're making a little dent, but I do think that it would have to be like a mass, like, you know, a mass movement of people are going to have to do something about it. So I don't know that it's going to change. Like I said, I mean, even when it comes to, you know, going back to the last one, the coronavirus, uh, they pretty much said, you know, fuck all the people. We care about money. So, you know, a lot of people had to go to work still. A lot of people still had to do pretty much everything exactly the same because, you know, profits over people. And if we're going to put animals over profits, well, that's, I mean, we can't even do it with human lives. So I don't know that animal lives are going to matter. <laughs> no. It's true. It's a great point. Yeah, so you got to be careful, Smitty, when you uh, do some like vegetable cleanse for 30 days and then start talking about a vegan because a, a vegan will check you. You know what I mean? Because they're serious. I mean, it, it, it's a deeper meaning. No, you're right. I honestly, I I would love, I love the idea of pissing off vegans. Not for any reason except just because it's funny. You know. <laughs> Now, were you talking about the the meat that they can make in a in a lab where it's like actual like has like chicken DNA in it and yeah. they, they add protein to it and it just grows and creates yeah. muscle and now do you yeah. think, do you think do you think people would would like non meat eaters do you think they would start eating that just because it's more you know no chickens were hurt in making this meat do you think that would be a viable thing? They, they might, I mean, they might, but I mean, you've seen like 
with with uh with the vaccines, how many people are like, I'm not putting that in my body, but then they'll go to McDonald's and they'll get a McRib. I, I've seen McRib. I, there's no way that they're food. There's no way. Uh, but like, I, I, personally, the vaccine doesn't scare me, but the idea of eating a piece of meat that was grown in the lab, I'm like, I don't know about that. I'm not, I'm not feeling that so much. I'm like, I, I, it, it, which is kind of weird because I'm like, no, butcher an animal in front of me. I want to make sure it's the real. I'm like, wait, that's kind of that's kind of fucked up too if you think about it. So, well, that's I, the thing. It's like I'll try it. Like I I ate food at Korean uh Korean food street food stands at fucking three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, if I'll eat that, I'll eat anything. <laughs> if you eat a hot I think you just solve the pandemic if we just start putting the vaccine inside the McRib. <laughs> 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 we'll be able to know so many people that way. <laughs> Problem yep. solved. All right. This is pointless. Fantastic. It's a good opportunity okay. to move on. Let's do that. Let's move on. Time for plan B. Everybody knows about, uh, everybody's heard about cancel culture. I actually saw this posted on uh, Zerilli, Matthew Zerilli's Facebook page. So shout out to Zerilli. What does canceling even mean? Obviously, not the dictionary definition of canceling uh but what we all associate canceling now what does that mean i can i can see where it comes from i mean you know i'm not paying that close attention to like buzzwords out there uh you know i, I pretty much stay focused on like the wind that i caught in my sails and that's what i'm doing you know i'm focusing on me my family my friends and stuff that i do in the, in the music scene that's you know, I, cancellation. I, I don't even know why this is even being you like kind of wow. It's a question, and there's something in uh, uh, modern culture here driving that word to really mean something other than its mechanical purpose, which is just cancel. You know, the, the way the way I see it is that people are mixing up cancel culture with capitalism. Because it all boils down to companies will do anything that, that supports their bottom line. And if they think that something isn't right or something is, is you know, is, is not going to help their product, they'll change it. Like uh, ch taking, um, what is it, uh, the, um, what is the syrup company that changed? Uh, Mrs. Oh, uh, Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima. You know, taking Aunt Jemima off, work. like that. You know, somebody crunched some numbers and did some surveys and polls and results and they said we think it'll help our brand if we do this and it, 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 it's not canceling it's just companies doing what they want and if and companies also have a, a they, they live in the, the social world at the same time so you're seeing a, a lot of this like georgia stuff being canceled because of the voting rights that they're taking away and it it, it actually it, it's not really People are trying to like, you know, not use the products like Coca-Cola and stuff like that. A lot of conservatives are saying don't use this and everything. And they they crunched the numbers. Coca-Cola crunched the numbers and they said, if, you know, we're going to piss off a lot of conservatives by doing this, by trying to prove a point. But we're still going to be more profitable in the end. You know what I mean? So it, it's it's all about money and capitalism. It's not... It's, it's, yeah, it's about image. It's about what you want, you know, uh, what does your image look like if you have these things? Uh, and it's changing image, you know, uh, essentially. It means, it's a new buzzword, something else to, um, uh, you know, brand. Let's brand cancellation, make it something, and make it mean something <laughs> like that. It's not like it, it's it's pretty, pretty uh, wild. Yeah, cancellation. Like I still, I you know, I keep it simple because I'm old school. To me, like, yep, the show was canceled. All right, not going. That that's still what it means to me. So, uh, right on, Jake. You want to chime in? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think I think he was he he hit on the head when he said it's a lot to do with capitalism. And I think to compound that is something like the Dr. Seuss thing, which don't even get me started on it. It was the estate that owns the property said, hey, there's some stuff in here that we don't want to associate with our brand. So let's just pull it off the shelf. And then they, you know, they take this, there was, they were, they were reading Dr. Seuss, the cat in the hat in the Senate, which is ridiculous because A, that wasn't even one of the ones that was canceled. And it's not cancellation. It's, it's, you know, it's no different than when you go to your Facebook 
and you see your memories and you see one from like 10 years ago and you're like, oh shit, <laughs> nobody needs to see that. I'm going to delete that. Yeah. Now. <laughs> exactly. it's like, oh, we don't want that to be associated with what we're about. But then it's, you know, somebody will latch onto it. Be like they're pulling that and they kind of use it as a distraction. Because if you guys remember, I mean, they pretty much brought this up during the, uh, during the big coronavirus relief bill. And it was like, everybody was talking about cancel culture. And I was like, they're making you not pay attention to the fact that they're trying to pass a bill that has like a 75% approval. And the Republicans, the conservatives don't want to vote for it, but they don't want you to notice they're not voting for it. And none of them did, none of them. And like I said, like a 75% approval, that's like the home run. You should just, you know, just do it. But they were so, there was so much talk about, oh my God, Dr. Seuss and the, the, the rapey skunk that you know the that they nobody was paying attention to the fact that this all happened and it's the same thing with peppy Le Pew. it was the same thing that they were like no like this if you watch the old cartoons it's just a little uncomfortable you're like no that that song's pretty rapey i don't i don't really i'm not comfortable with it and they were like yeah pull him off like don't put him in our stuff anymore because he's kind of rapey so they pull him off and everybody says that everybody's you know joe biden's canceling and he, he's probably sitting around like, what are you talking about you know like it was just a way a lot of it is a way of blowing smoke. So you're not paying attention to everything else that's going on because, you know, they make dumb choices and they don't want you to pay attention to it. So there's that. And then, you know, compound it with the fact that, yeah, he's, I mean, like Coca-Cola, they were like, Hey, you know, if we do this be less white thing, then it's going to make a whole lot of people really mad, but other people are going to be like, Oh, I love that brand because they support this. And now I'm going to, now I'm going to buy their stuff and they're probably going to make a bunch of money. Nike did it with uh, Colin, Colin Kaepernick, they ended up having like record breaking profits, even though everybody wanted to cancel Nike over it. And the NFL, you know, the NFL still makes a ton of money. It didn't, you know, they probably make more money causing all the controversy. Right. Yeah. All, all goes down to the bottom line, man. And it's very easy for, uh, you know, for people to influence using uh, all this, like, what is it? Like they create outrage or uh, is it, uh, yeah. there's a name for it. Just oh, I don't know. I call it. I just call it false outrage. I, you know, yeah. it's just find a reason to be pissed off this, today. Yeah, it's manufactured outrage, and it gets people going, man. You're like when you see yeah. that shit on social media, you know that shit spreads faster than the coronavirus, and it, it it seriously drives people's emotions, and then it drives them to the polls to vote on this stuff when they should be paying attention to fifteen other things that are ten times more important. Not to uh, like go off topic, but man, I'll tell you what, you hit the fucking nail on the head. It's a great example of, you know, when I was doing the radio show uh, recently, uh, the same sort of things that I would talk about and make fun of and talk shit about, uh, the same things that I would make fun of 10 years ago as opposed to now with the same listeners pissed them off now because it had a tinge of of something political. I can't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. Something about conspiracy theories, you know, and you, everybody is at such a fever pitch where it just, everything pisses them off. <laughs> They're only mad because somebody told them to be mad. Yeah. And it's always they, have you ever noticed like they are doing this and they, when you see these, these headlines and stuff, they are doing this and they are they the research, um, you know, um, articles in libraries about said topics you know it's it's all it's all the brick shit house fucking lawyering uh you know that the social media provides us um which, which is kind of sad you know it just it, it drives a wedge man it's that algorithm of what you do it's, it's just just pretty wild man i mean i don't think about it too much again i try to stay simple but yikes it's my motto. Stay simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. Just hit yeah. my head on a tree. Be 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 dumb and simple. <laughs> what do you think? You guys have anything else on that? You start thinking too much. You're gonna get yourself in trouble. Oh, yep. You can stay, but I'm uh, leaving. Let's move on to the next one, number five. Uh, while in an argument, it doesn't have to be a heated argument. It could be an online discussion, whatever. And somebody inevitably says the line. Well, that's just my opinion. I don't understand how that became an argument closer. You know, what's your go-to if somebody uses the line? That's just my opinion. Uh, I'm like, 
right away I'm like, okay, sweet, you know, cool. I mean, we can either agree to disagree or um, that's just my opinion. Like, I, I hate to hear it when it's thrown out when it's not necessary. You know what I mean? But well, I just yeah, I just, I just think if you're having a factual argument about facts and like just, you know oh, like, if you're having a factual disagreement, I, I I you know that that just ceases to be an argument to me at at some point. Yeah, you could just say, well, I don't feel like talking about it at this time, or um, you know, there's a lot of people that keep their opinions to their belt, but I don't know. I guess for me, context for the statement would would be important to me, but. Uh, it's just my opinion. like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big like, bulge in your pants, but that's just my opinion. I mean, what do you think, Jake? I uh, I'm the worst person to ask about this because I'm I'm relentless when I get it. I, you're on my Facebook. You've probably seen it. Everybody always tells me they have, but uh, I mean, I don't I don't really ar- I mean, I'll, I'll I'll argue an opinion with somebody back and forth, and I and we usually are pretty civil about that. But when it's like I have data to back it up and you're arguing with me, I will, I do not take that. <laughs> They'll be like, well, that's my opinion. I'll be like, well, your opinion's fucking wrong. Here are the numbers to back me up. And I'm relentless about it. I mean, this, I'm in, um, I'm in different groups that, you know, they, they have different, different opinions all over the place, but they all have like a common goal. Like the one is a uh, dads who lift group group. And I'm in that. And I mean, I'll, you know, somebody will post something that is just absolutely wrong. And I will be like, no, you're wrong. You're dumb. And here's why. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to back it up with studies. And I'm going to, and then they're like, well, that's just my opinion. I'm like, well, your opinion's still fucking wrong. Here are the studies that prove it. You know, so I'm pretty relentless if I'm in an argument with statistics and facts. But if it is like, oh, blue's my favorite color and somebody else says red's my favorite color, I'm like, I don't, yeah, whatever. Who cares? You know, and usually it does come down to me saying, I literally don't care. Like, that's cool. That's your opinion. Uh, here's my opinion. And then we can go our separate ways. So it yeah. depends if it's an actual opinion or if it's something that, you know, if they're actually arguing with statistics and facts, then I'm, I'm kind of nasty about it. You ever notice the people that say it's just my opinion are kind of just shitty people because it's, it's, it's <laughs> saying it's just my opinion is an out to be able to have really shitty opinions. And that's it. That's how I feel. I just, I, I, I'm interrupting you and I apologize, but I just feel like it's an, a way to get out of the argument when you know you're wrong and there's just no other way around it. When you know you're wrong, that's your go-to. <laughs> and you never, you never yeah. see somebody starting uh, like a comment or a post that starts with, it's just my opinion. It only happens after they get proven blatantly wrong. That's when it comes out. Because they'll, they'll start the whole comment thread out as if whatever they're saying is just blatant fact. And then you, you, you show somebody that they're not right. Yep. It comes out, well, it's just my opinion. I have, a better way. I have a better way to do that. You know, I mean, if, if someone's annoying me, I don't really want to, you know, fucking talk to them. And, you know, they want to debate and I don't really feel like it. You know, like if the debate happens to be a downer. Uh, I'll, I'll say, well, let's table this discussion or, you know, um, we'll just, you know, leave it here for now. I, I don't think, well, that's just my opinion is what I'd use to, in that, in that context, I guess. I think um, we need, I think we need to normalize people admitting when they're wrong sometimes. Um, an example, this is a, this is a great example, perfect for this show. Um, yesterday, somebody had mentioned in a group that I'm in, um, if soaking a tampon in vodka and using it <clears throat> would get them drunk. And I was like, yes, yes, it will. It will actually get you drunk faster because it goes straight into your, into your blood, into your blood. And, uh, it was also about the calories. I was like, yes, it's, you're still going to get calories from it. And I was like, but you're also going to pass a blood breathalyzer test. I see. No, you should. This is what everybody should do. Nobody should drink alcohol anymore. And then somebody commented and they said, actually, you won't pass a breathalyzer test. And they explained to me how a breathalyzer works. And I was like, huh, I didn't, I didn't know that. That's, that's crazy. So, yeah. So in case you guys ever need to know that, if you stick a tampon in yourself with uh, that soaked in vodka, you will get drunk really, really fast. It might kill you and you still will fail a breathalyzer test probably. So, but I didn't, and I'm, I think that more people need to say, yeah, I was actually wrong about that. I didn't, I really I'm, I'm baffled the fact that you could fail a breathalyzer test like that, but you can. So I think that more people need to be willing to say, oh, 
Like you've got statistics, you've got some facts and I'm wrong. Like, wow, that's crazy. Thanks for, thanks for educating me. I don't need to argue with you anymore. <laughs> I just love that what your story just now illustrated a point that I had to a friend of mine uh, earlier today when I was talking about the podcast and potential sponsors. And if I, I said, man, I don't, you know, the sponsors are a tough thing because I need to really know what they're in for. Because some days you might be talking about just all of a sudden you might be talking about, uh, you know, something completely harmless. And the next second you're talking about ass eating or something, you know, and or tampons, uh, vodka tampons, you know, you never know. Where the tampon was going, but I had, I had Prepare to fast forward. Prepare to fast forward. Fast forward. <laughs> fast forwarding, sir. Uh, let's uh, knock this last one out. Right Try now. Stop. Uh, very fun. Guys. Uh, let's see. Last one. What is the next great thing you're going to do? What is the next great thing you're going to do? Uh, just for yourself, personally. Could it could it have to do with others? Does it need to? That, that is uh, getting a recording studio to make album number two after we release album number one. Uh, That's awesome. How far are you away from that? Well, we pretty much have the second album written. So, you know, once we get done mastering and uh, release the release our first album is a, a pretty huge milestone for myself and, and Tony. We've been around a little bit and it feels good. Uh, we have a fantastic product and we really can't wait for uh Folks to lay their ears on it. Pretty proud of it, and uh, it'll be fun times again. All right, man. Uh, Josh. Oh uh, well, last year I quit drinking right when the pandemic started, and uh, I was a pretty heavy drinker then. So I'm kind of like I'm kind of starting uh, life 2.0 right now, and I'm kind of kind of learning how to do everything over again. And uh, I was kind of held back a lot for all that, for like you know, just just from living that lifestyle for such a long time that I kind of want to relearn how to do everything, but you know, better. And yeah. uh, I think I want to, I want to focus on advancing mostly just my, my, my business and my, my life, uh, my uh, work ethic. And I think that uh, there's a lot more that I can learn still. I've learned a lot in the last year and I think I'm just going to focus, focus on here and here. It's a great thing. Nice. I like that. Very Honestly, good. it's a great thing, man. I, I quit drinking for a month in the middle of the pandemic uh, and felt great. How are you feeling about it? I mean, you got to feel good, right? It was, you know, it was the best time to do it. If I, there was a, you know, I really didn't have an option because there was, it's kind of getting to a point there that I'd only sober up to go to work. And then when I was out of work, you know, that would, what would I do? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, no, I'm feeling great. I, uh, I, I, I replaced hangover headaches with caffeine headaches and, uh, it's, it's actually, you know, probably the best decision I ever made. And, uh, I, my buddy Matthews has really helped me out a lot with that. And, um, I gotta tell you anybody else out there is thinking about doing the same thing, <laughs> do it. Cause you're going to regret that you didn't do it a lot earlier. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Um, we got to get, uh, I never have Zerilli on to talk about, is it addiction treatment services? Yeah. No, it's, what is it? The, it's the porch community, right? Yeah. Yeah. He community works for, center. yeah, he works for just addiction, addiction treatment services. And yeah. I think the, something, the porch is like a branch of theirs. Yeah. Get him on time. And every time I have him on, I don't talk about that. I talk about comedy and then just talking shit. So, uh, that's, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a big one. I think a lot of people are seeing, seeking that out right now. Uh, Jake, what's the next great thing you're going to do? I have, a, I have a lot of stuff on my mind I want to do. Uh, I have really severe ADHD, so I like, have like all these things I want to do. But I, got, I, I, mean, I guess most of my focus is um, it's every five years. It was an accident, but every five years I run this half marathon on Mackinac Island. And I think I want to so, – I did it in 2011, 2016, and then I was going to do it last year, but they didn't have it. So I'm going to do it this year. So I'm definitely going to have to train for that because that's 13.1 uh, miles, and it's that's a trek. Um, so and it's on Mackinac Island, so it's all hills. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to do that. Um, I don't really. I should probably cut back on the caffeine. Um, that's definitely my advice. Um, 
you guys, you guys had to quit drinking. And I have been telling myself for some time that I need to cut back on caffeine, but it, it has not happened. It has not even happened a little bit yet. So I should probably work on that. Um, other than that, um, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of goals. I wanted to buy a house this year. And every time I even look in the direction of a house that's for sale, it's gone. So let's see how that goes. But uh, there's like, yeah, I mean, personal goal wise, I want to do more endurance cardio um, because it's good for you. And you, it's good for you too, Nate. You should do it too. <laughs> you know, I actually, Cartman was like, oh man, because I told him I was working out, you know? And uh, he said, you got to get a hold of Jake. Got to get a hold of Jake. And I'm like, he lives in Cadillac, man. I'm not going to Cadillac to fucking work out. Like, I'll, you know, I'll do my best from home. <laughs> hey, I go, you know, I want to do this, I want to do this. You know, like, what do I do? And no, I'll, I'll talk to him. I talked to him quite a bit about it, actually. But, uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff is, it's, it's, it's very basic stuff that people learned in, like, kindergarten. It's like how to, you know, if somebody hands you an apple or a candy bar, which one's better? It's like, it's not hard. Sure. And so, like, is it better to sit down or to go for a walk? You know, it's, it's pretty basic stuff. A lot of it is just the, uh, uh, getting just getting up and doing it and so i mean for me that's not hard but for most people that's kind of where they struggle for me it's like i think about it all the time like i'll be at work and i'll be like i can't wait to go do whatever i gotta go do tonight so i get excited about it i know for a lot of people it's an issue to like get out and actually go do it so i think for me it's trying to it's not so much just teaching people about it but trying to normalize it as a lifestyle so it's like oh i can teach you about nutrition but it's not really all that complicated I basically need, just need to teach you to make it a part of your life to do this stuff every day. So with Cartman, it was more or less just changing his life to, okay, now I have to make this section of my day be dedicated to this. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that, that, I think that's probably the biggest thing for most people is, you know, don't, don't drink a bunch of alcohol because it doesn't do anything for you and just make it, you know, make it part of your schedule and do something you actually touched on earlier. Do something that you're excited about doing because I like yeah. what I do. I'm not going to do something about that. Set a course for Earth. Maximum warp. Uh, it has been great uh, having you guys on. I really appreciate it. Uh, Jake Draper from Mad Titan Fitness in Cadillac. Do you got anything you want to go out? Anything you want to pump real quick? Um, I don't yet. I have some stuff coming up. So maybe I'll be back on for that. Yeah, we'll get you on again. Yeah. Uh, Sledder, Sled Dog, uh, new album coming out for Crony. I know you got to get it uh, mastered, a few things done yet. But I uh, got that album coming out. Anything else you want to get out? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, yep. I'm going to be doing a 22 to None show May 22nd uh, with um, uh, Goofy Foot. It'll be Crony and Goofy Foot. And uh, it's going to be at their new place there in South Portland. I mean, we're still building the ideas uh, and details. But uh, we got that show going on. It's going to be a big benefit. Um at their new place, I mean, we're talking pig roast and um, all sorts of fun. So that's going to be a live live event coming up for us. But you know, we are hyper focused on getting this album out, and uh, uh, we, you know, you know, you'll be included on all that. So we'll have some fun during that time. And Dave, like you know, Dave Runnin, he's been he's, the job he's done has it's been fantastic. Working with him is like just so easy. And, yeah. You know. Anyways. But we got that going on, man, and um, that's what's coming up. And, and you do have the most metal silhouette of all time. Right. So I'm, just, I'm telling you, man, it's fucking metal. That's metal right there. Yeah, got to represent <laughs> uh, my brother. Josh Paul from IK Productions. Uh, what do you got going on? You want to get out anything? I just want anybody that's watching this, I just want them to know that anything I said on here, that if they don't agree with me, uh, I just want you to know it's just my opinion. <laughs> oh man honestly that's uh that's the podcast tag now at this point yeah. this, these are all opinions uh very good that's what we're doing that's what i'm doing from now on <laughs> uh as always gentlemen uh keep talking keep conversation going and uh we'll do it uh another time all right. soon all right thanks man appreciate it thank you smitty i'm gay Let's make sure.